Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this new video, uh, which is Marine Oral Exam Prep Part 3. In this video again, I will take up uh, one oral exam question and then explain that as much in detail as possible, yet keeping it short enough for you to be interested and invested in it and also use the same points to answer uh, the question if asked in the oral exam. Let's get started. So today's question is when beaching a vessel for temporary repairs, what factors should mariners consider? So this question could be pitched at uh, chief mates or master's level, but even at second mates level as well, although it is more of a senior management kind of question. So let's consider what factors you have to consider as a mariner when you are beaching a vessel for temporary repairs. Now remember, firstly, you have to understand that beaching a vessel um, is uh, should be uh, the kind of a last alternative for a mariner, especially if this is uh, not being uh, directed by the company or the owner of the charter. Uh, you should always consider that if there is a, maybe a repair required or there's a damage sustained by the vessel which needs to be immediately rectified, is there an alternative available? So can you properly go to a dry dock, the nearest dry dock, or can you seek shelter, or can you seek a port of refuge, or can you get a tug to assist you into a port where repairs can be carried out? Because beaching a vessel, if you are not an experienced master or an experienced mariner, can lead to further complications because finding the right spot for beaching is also tricky. Finding the right kind of a sea bottom is tricky. And there are other many other stability related factors, which is uh, quite tricky for a vessel. So think of an alternate available. If there is an alternative available, then please go for that. Otherwise, go for beaching the vessel. Now, when you're beaching the vessel, you have to remember that uh, you have to consider the most important factor when it comes to beaching the vessel and that is the rise and fall of tide. So can you beach the vessel with the fall of tide and then refloat the vessel with the rise of tide? Can repair be done in one tide cycle or does it need more time? So one tide cycle normally lasts for about 6 to 12 hours. So 6 hours every rise and fall of tide in most of the ports, in most of the waters is a 6 to 7 hours of rise and fall. Can you carry it out within those six hours because you might beach the vessel uh, due to a fall of tide but if you are unable to finish the repairs you may automatically refloat or due to the rise of tide uh, um, there could be conditions where which is not under your control and you may have to refloat because of uh, rise of tide so you also have to understand are there tidal windows available for you if you are required to unbeach quickly so there could be situations where you might realize that you have beached the vessel but it is not safe for you uh, there could be numerous factors firstly it could be the area it could be there could be a storm nearby the sea bottom might be damaging the vessels um, uh, or there might not be permits available or that area might self be dangerous not suitable for seafarers to carry out repairs so you have to understand uh, you have to calculate is there a tidal window available if you require to beach or unbeach the vessel or required to be moved out once the repairs are completed you also have to consider the nature and the contour of the bottom. Does that suit uh, your ship type? Now, of course, uh, see, uh, ideally we would love a soft bottom where the vessel can be beached smoothly. But uh, when uh, beaching is required, normally you don't get the ideal conditions unless it is directed by the company. Unless it is a planned beaching, you don't normally get the ideal conditions because beaching is normally the result of an accident or an incident which is not expected. So the nearest place where you may beach the vessel may not be the most suitable one or most ideal one. However, if you have decided to beach the vessel, remember, you have to consider the nature and the contour of the bottom. Does that help you? to firstly uh, not damage the bottom of your vessel? Does that help you to make sure that the bottom of the vessel is sitting comfortably on the bottom, uh, on the seabed uh, or on the beach or on the land where repairs can be then effectively carried out? You also have to think about what approach uh, will you take? What is the depth of water? Um, how will you uh, approach? How will you depart? How will you pull out? Now remember, most of the times you won't have any tugs available for assistance. Uh, you may have uh, the bow thruster ready to, uh, to go, but remember you are beaching the vessel. So that means that there could be a, a situation where the vessel is going to go onto the land, where the bow thruster may also not be available for you to use. You have to be very careful with the rudder as well. So you have to understand how will you go about um, uh, beaching the vessel? Do you have the required depth for it? How will you approach it? How will you depart it? So when I say approach, I mean the angle of approach. How will you 
how, how, how will you uh, approach the land so that the ship doesn't suffer any damages or further damages uh, how will you use your engines what is the method and aspect of approach will you be using any anchors uh, what is the weather expected during the beaching period so not only when you are beaching but also during the time when you are carrying out repairs um, how much of the hull do you require to breach so how much of the hull would you be placing on the land and how much of it would be in the water uh, so all these factors are there for you to consider as a master or a mariner then you also have to think about it that when you're beaching the vessel, you have to treat it like a dry dock. Uh, how the vessel uh, touches the bottom at first, uh, how there is an up thrust, uh, how the vessel then sits on the uh, blocks will be very similar to how the vessel will sit on the bottom. Uh, will you have enough positive GM for the ship to beach and to refloat? Uh, will the vessel be stable enough? Will the vessel hold? Uh, will the exp will the forces experienced on the vessel structure impact the vessel in a way that uh, you are unable to carry out repairs or any further damages may be sustained which may be unsafe for your vessel so these are the factors you have to consider remember that when you go for dry docking there are certain dry dock calculations certain stability calculations required to be carried out that is of course covered in my ship stability series uh, so go and check out that uh, playlist but uh, think of it like a dry dock when the ship will first touch the bottom and when the ship overall takes the bottom so you have to consider it and draw similar comparisons to how the first touches the block how the ship first touches the block in the dry dock and then sits overall the block so remember all those considerations uh, you also have to make sure that you secure all loose items on ships of course there cannot be any loose items like i said when you are beaching the vessel most of the times unless you are uh, sending the ship away for recycling or sending the ship for scrapping most of this beaching is accidental and of course it is not planned for so when you are taking on uh, the beaching uh, activity you have to remember that the ship will experience a lot of forces because of its uh, interaction with the sea bottom so at that point of time the forces that the ship experiences may lead to um, uh, 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 if the, there are loose items they may be scattered around which may cause damage to the ship's property ship structure as well as the people who are working on board so make sure that all loose items are secured enough treat it like you are going to go through a storm and that is the kind of securing you must do finally of course you cannot do any beaching without the approval of the owner the charter the hull insurance p i clubs uh, flag state uh, the classification society most of the all important um, so you need to seek approval from them so making sure that you seek approval when you seek approval you have to explain the scenario you have to explain why you need to beach the vessel you have to of course give a full incident report uh, of course time permitting that uh, your vessel is allowing you to do that otherwise uh, if it is an emergency then you just have to seek quick permission from the company making sure that the uh, vessel is tended to immediately so that the damage can be contained and the vessel can be made safe for the ship's crew so i hope this video was useful for you let me know if uh, there is any point i missed the idea behind these videos is for you to be able to prepare for oral examination with enough points uh, so that you can reiterate these points you can repeat these points in front of the surveyor and give some uh, brief explanation about each of these points just like i have so i have kept it under 10 minutes and you can do the same if the question is asked of you thank you for watching today's video and bye for now